Okay, so the next thing that I really wanted to talk about would be the inflammasome. And um, depending on the order that you're watching this in, you may want to watch my video on cytokines first. But the inflammasome, the overall goal of the inflammasome is to increase the production of a specific type of cytokine known as interleukin-1 beta. So we're going to increase interleukin-1 beta production, mounting an inflammatory response. So the, I guess the cause of where this whole inflammasome thing starts is that something happens. We don't really know all the details into this, but something causes potassium channels to open, potassium channels to open up. So we don't know what this could be, but here are some hypotheses as to what this would be. So one of the things that we think could cause potassium channels inside our cells to open up would be cell damage, damage to parts of the membrane. Uh, and then the other thing that my book mentions is the very high extracellular concentration of ATP. So I'm going to make the assumption that if you're taking this class that you know that potassium is the most abundant intracellular cation and so inside the cell there's a high concentration of potassium and if it opens up it's going to go from a high concentration to a low. But just in case you didn't already know that, so we have a high, that's an arrow saying it's a high concentration of potassium and it's going to leave the cell to the area of the low potassium concentration. And so uh, this kind of has some consequences. Uh, the, the net result of this is that it's going to cause the formation of something called the inflammasome. So this is results in there. Jesus, my handwriting is bad. The inflammasomes are going to start to form. So what is an inflammasome made out of? Well, in the, or in the cytoplasm, I don't know why I almost said that, um, there's a similar nod-like receptor. And the specifics of the name I don't feel like are superbly important, but this is what it's called. It's called NLRP3. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and classify that this is nod-like. This is a nod-like receptor. And so once we start to form an inflammasome, the NLR, uh, NL, uh, RP3 forms the homodimer. So two of them start to come together. And the formation of this homodimer is going to, I'm going to switch colors to really drive this point home here, results in the binding of an adapter protein. So yes, NLRP3 is a nod-like receptor. It does form a homodimer, but what makes it unique is that it doesn't have a card domain. And so what it needs is this adapter protein to come in. This adapter protein has with it a card domain. Um, and the, I guess the significance of this is that the longer the pathways are, the more steps we have. For example, in this case, the extra binding, unlike with the other one when we talked about the direct conformational change, uh, it has a card domain attached to it. This having to have a card domain attaching to it gives us a longer step, which the longer the step and the cascades and pathways that we're talking about, the more precision we can have in this. So inflammasomes are arguably much more, uh, more well regulated than the other types were. But anyways. This card domain has uh, going to start binding to it procapsase 1. Um, and if we have a large concentration, an extremely high concentration of procapsase 1 into each other's affinity, they're going to start kind of bumping into each other, undergoing conformational changes, which is going to result in they're going to start cleaving themselves. So we call this uh, autoproteolysis. Auto self proteo protein lysis cleavage. So they're going to start to cleave themselves. And the result of this. I'm going to switch colors to just to really reiterate my point here is that after we have autoproteolysis we have ourselves the active form of capsase so active capsase 1 Ta -da! so why is this superbly important well so what goes into active capsase 1 would be pro the pre uh, inactive form of interleukin 1 beta going in and what do we get coming out of this? Well, we get active interleukin 1 beta. Interleukin 1 beta does a lot of things which we'll talk about later but that's the name of the game with the inflammasome. So both TLRs uh, complement receptors to a lesser extent. Uh, 
the nod-like receptors and then the nod-like receptors, which are just a special, special fancy form of the inflammasome, all result in uh, activation and secretion of cytokines. Now, they have different ways of going about and doing this, but at the end of the day, if you don't learn anything else, know that all three of these things are structurally and functionally related and that they all result in the production of cytokines. Cool, so let's look at some pictures. So here we have a picture here of the assembly of the inflammasome. So they're saying that this is a lot of high concentration of ATP results in the removal of potassium, but it can also be damaged to the membrane itself, uh, which is going to result in these channels opening up here. Um, <clears throat> here we see the NR, uh, NLRP3. This is a nod-like protein, a nod-like receptor protein. The adapter protein is going to bind here. That's symbolized in blue. Then the procapsase is going to start to bind here. And this picture here shows, I like it nice, because they're starting to bump into each other, which results in the conformational changes, which where they're going to undergo autoproteolysis, which activates the capsase 1 enzyme, which is going to start activating interleukin beta 1. And then their leukin beta 1 is going to bind to its own receptors here, which is going to result in the transcription and translation of interleukin beta 1. And so this is right here is a positive feedback loop. So things can, can really quickly get out of hand. Um, 2 becomes 4, 4 becomes 16, so on and so on and so forth. But the, I guess, complexity of these pathways here makes them a lot more easier to fine-tune, a lot more easier to control.